Now to integrate the function sine squared theta with respect to theta, what we're going to do is use the identity cos 2a, let's just write it down over here, cos 2a is identical to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Okay, and what we do is we rearrange this to make sine squared a the subject. So by adding 2 sine squared a to both sides, we'd therefore have 2 sine squared a plus the cos 2a becomes identical to 1. And then by subtracting cos 2a from both sides, we would have that 2 sine squared a is identical to 1 minus cos 2a. And then finally, by dividing by 2, halving both sides, we have that sine squared a is identical to a half of 1 minus cos 2a. Now, we can use this identity then to integrate any sine squared function. And in this particular example, you'll notice that the theta that I've got here is equivalent now to the a. So the integral of sine squared theta is exactly the same as integrating a half 1 minus cos 2 theta. So if we write that here, we've got 1 half the integral of 1 minus cos 2 theta. And this is integrated with respect to theta. Don't forget to put these two terms in a bracket. And you'll notice also I've put the constant outside the integral. It just makes the integral less cluttered, simplifies it. OK, so we'll put the half down and we're ready to integrate. Integrating 1 with respect to theta is theta. And the integral of minus cos 2 theta with respect to theta will be minus 1 half of the sine of 2 theta. Don't forget your constant of integration, so that's plus c. Now, this is the answer, but because we've got a fraction inside this bracket, that's not regarded as being very tidy, so what I'm going to do is pull the half out the front. So by pulling it out the front, we have half times a half, which is a quarter. And then, because I pulled the half out the front, this becomes 2 theta. And then we have minus sine 2 theta. And then we have the constant c. So this is a much uh, more simplified version of this answer up here. OK, so I've shown you now how to integrate sine squared function. So we'll, we'll just try another example. Um, this time, let's suppose we have a number out the front. Let's suppose we have to integrate 3. And let's suppose we have sine squared, say, 5x. OK, sine squared 5x. And we've got to integrate this with respect to x. Well, in this example, OK, you'll notice that I've got sine squared 5x. Over here, I've got sine squared a. So clearly, the a is now replacing, or I should say the 5x is replacing the a. So we have sine squared 5x equals a half 1 minus cos 2 lots of 5x. In other words, the cosine of 10x. So using that identity then, we have the 3 times the half, 3 over 2. Avoid writing 1 and a half. And then we have the integral of 1 minus the cos of 10x, double the 5x, dx. OK? So we have the 3 over 2 at the front. And the integral of 1 now with respect to x is simply x. And the integral of negative cos 10x with respect to x is minus 1 tenth of the sine 
of 10x. And then we have the constant of integration plus c. And in this example, I don't really want that one tenth inside this bracket. So I'm going to pull one tenth out the front. So we have 3 over 2 multiplied by one tenth. So we end up with 3 over 2 tenths, which are 20. 3 over 20. And then the bracket. And because we pulled the tenth out, we need to make this 10x. There we go. And then minus sine of 10x. And again, plus c. So, we therefore should be able to now use this identity to integrate any sine squared function.